episode 89 of Comics and Us. I'm TJ. And I'm Chris. And I'm Lumpy. And this is the review show that reviews comics. Chronologically. Kind of. Going in Detective Comics number 81. It was... Oh, you know what? That Two-Face issue we just covered last week. Yeah. Because that's when it's going to be released. uh, Was a Halloween issue. Oh, it was. It was October, yeah. So... Mm. Me, I, uh, I don't know I, why it was Halloween. <laughs> I just wanted to throw that out there. There was no pumpkins in it or anything, so I don't know. Nope. Anyway, this one was, uh, Detective Thomas 81 was released in November 1943. The Batman story in this hit is called The Cavalier Crime. We get a new rogues gallery guy. Is he? Is he? Does he stick around? I think so. He's not prominent these days, but I think he right. sticks around during the golden and silver age of comics. Okay. Because he seems like he's one of those characters. I don't know, bring up the synopsis and look and see if he has a first appearance, an only appearance. Uh, believe it or not, I did it already. It says Cavalier first appearance. So Ooh. yeah, he's probably going to be back then. Yeah, Mortimer Drake. Alright, so the Cavalier Crime was written by Don Cameron, penciled by Bob Kane, inked and lettered by George Russo's, and edited by Jack Siff. The executive editor was Whitney Elsewhere. Again, three people drew this cover. Bob Kane, Jerry Robinson, and George Russo's. Do they need three people to draw covers? I, don't, I think somebody's drawing it, and then they're getting they're taking all three of them are taking credit, right? Bob Kane's the only one who puts his name on it, though, so. I was going to say, this isn't that detailed to be like. No. You think so? I mean, it's not bad, or just don't know. You, you think, I someone, think they're, someone draws it, someone colors it, and someone letters it? No. I think they're pumping these covers out, and they're not trying to get credit for each one, so they're just putting all their names on it as credit. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe sure. somebody draws the, the, the top part that says added attraction, boy commandos, every time. Or maybe Bob Kane always draws Batman, and somebody else draws the rest. That's a possibility. I don't know. Whatever. Whose turn is it? Lumpy. Sure. Lumpy. Do the cover. So, one of the three musketeers is on a roof. <laughs> And um, one musketeer, a single musketeer, <laughs> is uh, fighting Batman, and um, Robin is swinging down like he's he does going say to his head he does move. say D'Artagnan in this at one. Point. He does say D'Artagnan. Is that a three musketeers thing? He that's one of the three musketeers. Is yeah. named D'Artagnan, uh, but he never me- never mentions candy bars ever. So <laughs> does not. <laughs> well, it's because there's only one. Oh, right, because you can't make three musketeers with one can't musketeer. Make three. Yeah. Um, there's a giant moon. So I have a question about this. I'm assuming you're you're um reading a reprint. Yes. What color what? is your background? Light blue. Because uh, mine is pure white. I got a pure right. white background, and the moon looks. It, it's a moon. It just looks like yours. a white circle. It looks like a white circle. That's like yeah. like they didn't even color anything. So yeah. even on it's mine, cool. it's terrible. It looks like they made like a mistake. There's a giant white circle. Yeah, that's all we got. So it's giant. Like it but doesn't even back- look like a moon. But like your background, the background underneath where where Batman is fighting the. Must there is the background white or blue? Blue, yeah. blue. Yeah, that so, might just be washed out on ours because Batman's white too. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah, yeah. Like the um, the background where it says so. Detective Comics is in light blue, and the stripe like behind that is yellow. Yeah, that's what we got too. Yeah, so it's just that it might be washed out because Batman's kind of the same color as the background. Well, he's the same color on ours, white. <laughs> I mean, the background's a lot lighter than him. I just sent it to you so you could see it. But, but like I said, the white moon is kind of like it's not a moon. It's weird. Oh, good, TJ. Oh, wow, yours is really bright. Yeah, I mean, no, mine's Batman's a gray. No, see, copy. see, see, Batman's gray on his outfit. Ours is white. He's pure white. Yeah, yeah. Uncle weird. Chris, you should send him a picture of that. Yeah, hold on, I'll do it. But well, yeah, it's weird. Your yours is like redrawn almost. It's yeah, yeah. It looks way better. Or ours just sucks. But when I post the YouTube version, I'll do the one work of the one I have that's all washed out, just so so everybody sees it. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, while they're doing that, the cover is still ten cents. We still have the extra added attraction of the Boy Commandos and the Batman and Robin encounter a new and swashbuckling foe, the Cavalier. Anything else about the cover? It stinks. 
<laughs> it's not that great. No. <laughs> no, it stinks. <laughs> wow, yours is totally different. Yeah. Like even Robin, like all their skin color except for Batman's face is white. Yeah, I like, right. they didn't color it. That's why I was uh, was curious about yours because I know you were reading a reprint. Huh, that's weird. All right, is that it? We done with that? Yep, done with that. All right. So moving on. Normally, I would talk about you know the book review and the uh, Superman Super Crow, but I don't have it here this time. Nope. Instead, I got the world famous encyclopedia. <laughs> Yep, we're getting a Funko Wagnos Encyclopedia for seven cents. Five hundred and twelve pages for only seven cents and a three cent stamp. So ten cents, you're getting this giant book. Yep. So there you go. Get your you get your uh, encyclopedia comic readers. I guess, you know what though? I guess it's a scam because it's probably just the first one. Yeah, and it's definitely got, just the first one. Yeah, because it says there's twenty five superb volumes. Uh, always. Yeah, so gonna, that's how they get you. Oh, first oh, one for ten. Uncle cents. Uncle Chris. You missed this. It also it says seven cents, and then in little smaller letters, it says and a three cent stamp. I did. I said that. So ten cents total. But oh, um, I didn't. I sorry. I yeah. didn't hear you. I wonder. I'm trying to look where it says, and then uh, for ten dollars additional for each of the next twenty four volumes or something. But I don't see any of that. No, but you do get a, a gift coupon. If yeah, you I see the gift coupon. Anyway, that was the 1943 edition of the encyclopedia. Moving on. <laughs> Uncle Chris, want to talk about the non-canon splash page? That's not canon? A shrunken no. Batman and Robin again? No, I don't think Batman's... I think Batman's bigger than a... A, a sword? Rapier? <laughs> rapier. Whoa, whoa, he's rapier than a sword? Or, um, maybe, he's definitely maybe, maybe it's an <laughs> rapier epi. than a sword. Maybe, maybe an epi. I don't know. He does, do sleep in, he does sleep in the same room as an eight-year-old. <laughs> whoa, yes. all right, let's not get into that. Um... We got one musketeer standing there with little tiny Batman running down his sword and then a small Robin swinging over and we got a half a par- paragraph of, or a whole paragraph of text. That's what we got going on here. Yep. There is, the background is just nothing. Yeah, it's a, it looks like a dirty wall on ours, but it's probably because ours looks like it's, somebody, I think the comic we got the scan of looks like somebody like had it in their basement for 50 years before yeah, they scanned it. because, I mean, mine's pretty crisp, but it is like baby poop green on the background. Yeah, well, ours got like dirt all over it on no, the background. Yeah. What color is his suit? It's gray. Oh, it's yellow. Yellow and brownish. Brown, maybe yeah, red. Yellow, brown, and a red so feather. His- his boots and his pants and his like sleeves of his shirt are purple. The rest Brown. of all of his stuff is yellow, and Light his cape yellow. is green. Yeah, we got a green cape. I don't even see that cape back there because it's blending with the dirty wall <laughs> and the shadow. The floor is blue and the wall is green. Yep. I just skipped two pages on accident. Now I got to try to find a way to go back. Anyway, we're gonna oh, we open up with our new villain, the Cavalier, talking to a kid. And this kid has a baseball, and he's like, and the Cavalier's like, give me your baseball. He's like, and the kid's like, no, I'm not giving you my baseball. And the Cavalier gives him three baseball and takes his baseball. He says, no, give me back my ball. And then he just walks away. Yeah. Bruce and Dick see this and says, well, that was odd. But this is a job for, <laughs> this is a job for Batman and Robin for some yeah, reason. Because they let's that get kid's changed. Ball. Instead of just being a regular guy and saying, yo, dude, get that kid his ball back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Bruce could have just went up as Bruce yeah. and said, what are you right. doing? Yo, we can't take that kid's <laughs> ball. Give it back to him. <laughs> but anyway, Batman and Robin show up a split second later. They say that. Split second yeah, later. Split second. And he's and Batman's like, who are, what, who are you stealing balls for? And he's yeah. like, ha ha, I'm your new enemy. I'm going to be more of a nuisance than Joker and Penguin. And so the, his 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 goal was to be one of Batman's problems. Uh, he says, he, "Meet your potentially famous new opponent, the Cavalier. I yeah, hope to be even greater I, inconvenience to you than the Joker and the Penguin." So I'm a bad guy. I want to do bad things, and I also want to piss Batman and Robin off so they chase me around. Okay, essentially, yes. yeah, yeah, whatever. But, I mean, it's what he does. He just calls them out and tells them I'm your new foe. Yeah. And he says he needs the baseball for something he's doing. And Batman's like, I don't like your attitude. And Robin's like, stand back, Batman. I got this. Yeah, I guess Robin thinks he's uh, a little flamboyant. So he thinks he's, like, not tough, I yeah, guess. Yeah, because he says Batman's, he tells Batman to stay back for, and save your strength for tougher characters. Right, and he says other things later on, too. Like, he thinks he's a sissy or something. I don't know. I don't get it. He does call him a sissy. Yeah. 
Anyway. Or he calls somebody a sissy. He does. He says sissy in this one, or this one or the last one. I'm not sure. It's, I'm pretty sure it's this one. Anyway, Robert Robin takes a swing at him, but misses because the Cavalier ducks our dodges and then throws a rock at him. I think. I think so. Or a, a, a leaden a, pellet, they call it. A leaden pellet from a lace handkerchief. Yeah, this is a this pisses Batman off. He goes and punches the Cavalier for that. But Robin's unconscious here. Yeah, he or... mess Robin up. That leaden ball must have been heavy as hell. Yeah, because he just that's knocked... what I'm assuming. It was like either tied into it or like or it flung I it like a know. slingshot or something. I don't yeah. know either. It kind of oh. looks like he swings it though. That's what oh. it looks like. It's on the end of it. Like yeah. so, this knocks Robin out for the forty third time. The Cavalier. Do you think he stole Robin's slingshot? Because we haven't seen that slingshot of Robin's in a long time. Yeah, it's been a while right. since he stole Robin. But no, it says he has it in a lace handkerchief. I know. <laughs> and that ball looks like it hits him right in the mouth. Robin should have lost a couple things yeah. if it's that well, bad. At, at 43 knockouts and whatever Batman has, they both have, like, brain damage by yeah, now, Yeah, but they right? normally get hit in the back of the head. They wouldn't lose teeth or anything. Right, right, right. No, yeah, he's yeah, he probably lost I mean, lost but too. they already have brain... They're, they're dressed up like a bat and a... Yeah, this is true. Maybe they do have brain damage. You're right. <laughs> anyway, so Robin's unconscious, and this is an, and he's about to hit by a car. So Batman goes and saves him, but the car stops, and the Cavalier gets in the car. And Batman is like, "Oh, this guy's smarter than we gave him credit for." You would think by now, after all the people that they fought, they would not underestimate anybody. Right? Like, uh, do you not? He should think ahead a little bit here, Batman. You're a detective. Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes when he feels like it. <laughs> Anyway, Batman and Robin talked to the kid, and the kid's like, wow, I get to talk to you? It's worth losing the ball. And he says that the ball was autographed by some baseball player who's no longer a baseball player, and it was his dad's idol or something. So yeah. Batman and Robin go to the kid's house where the dad explains that he got the ball signed by a former baseball player he looked up to who is now a business owner. Barry Brannigan. Yes. Or Benny Berrigan. Barry. Yes. Barry Berrigan. Barry Berrigan. And then Batman, upon learning this, realizes what this is about. Is about. It's about forgery. How, I guess. Wh- how did you figure that out? Well, Barry Barrington signed the baseball. Right. right? And he owns a company, I guess? And he owns a company. So, yeah. He's, okay. he's, so, he's, forgery, it must be. Forgery. Yeah. What else Logic, would it be? Yeah. Logical yeah, okay. conclusion. I, I got it. I see. I, I, what else would it be? What was I thinking? I mean, I didn't think that it would be forgery for this. <laughs> I am not at all. Not even a little. Not no. So Batman goes to uh, the mansion of Barry Barrington, where the Barry Barrington's butler says he's not here. He's at a wheat exchange bank. Didn't know that was a thing, but okay. And Batman decides to jump over a railing for some reason. <laughs> he likes jumping over railing. And he's like, drive, drive, Robin. We got to go to a bank. Because Robin's in the driver's seat. <laughs> Meanwhile, in another part of Gotham... That romantic rascal moves rapidly along his roundabout road of crime. That's exactly ah, what the narrator That's, that's a mouthful there, yeah. That's what the narrator says. <laughs> I word see. Word for word. Yeah, that's terrible. Well, he, the Cavalier has a partner who is a forger, and he forges Barry Barrington's signature from a baseball. And One so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You just gave that thought up mid sentence. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the forger goes to the bank and says, hey, I got a note from Barry Barrington. I need to get into a safety deposit box. And they get into the safety deposit box, and all that's in there is a miniature baseball bat. Is that how it works in the 40s? You just go somewhere with somebody's signature and say, let me into their house because they gave me a note? I think so, because isn't wasn't that forgery a big deal back then? I guess it was. It's just I mean, weird to me now. I mean, like, listen, you can forge a check. I don't know if it was like, hey, I got this note from this guy that says right. I could go into a safe deposit box. I, that seemed a little far-fetched, but I mean, I don't know. I'm, I didn't live in a 40, so. It's not the first time they've done something like this. It's like, I have this thing from this guy. Well, why do you need to forge his name? They don't know really what his signature looks like. They, you just write a signature on there, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, that's true. I don't know. In the 90s, I used to go down to the store and tell the guy that my dad sent me in to buy cigarettes. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We used to do that all the time. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. I guess, I guess, I don't know. Yeah, but nobody checked to see if you you had a picture of your dad or something. They just sent it, and that was it. I don't know. 
Right. I mean, this guy was more legit than me. He actually had a signature. <laughs> so I was, I was just buying cigarettes. The so. part that confused me is, like, maybe it wasn't like this back then, but isn't safety deposit box, you have a key and the bank has a key and you both need to open it? I don't know. I thought so, I too, but either. I don't know about back then. Like, maybe they held the key and you had to go in and say, I want my stuff out of there. Maybe. I just always assume you have to have a key and they had a key, but I don't like I don't know how it works. That's the only time I've ever seen anybody do a safety deposit box is that way, where both have a key. So one can't get in without the other one. So the bank, people who work in the bank can't steal your crap either. Right. Yeah, but I don't know. I had no idea. I didn't even know they did that. Anyway, Batman and Robin show up at the bank and say, hey, did someone come here and take money out and bury Barrington's name? And they're like, no, but they did use a safety deposit bar and take a toy baseball bat. And hey, he's over there. And then <laughs> he runs away. And then Batman and Robin chase him. <laughs> and it's a big street race. And then the Cavalier summons lightning and scares a, a couple of horses. What? Where are you? I don't even see that. Yeah. It's whack. Yeah. Oh, whack. yeah. He's got like an electric sword or something. Yeah, yeah. He says, but we didn't know that. We didn't. We didn't know that upon this thing until you read the narration. That this uh, looks like lightning strikes. I see now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I skipped that for some reason. It says the Cavalier's electrical sword flashes in action. Yeah, but if you skim down, the first thing you see is swack and the lightning right. bolt hitting the sword. You don't well, read you, the. You don't. Your eyes don't go to the words right away. No, you're right. Did you see the carriage? It says scrap for victory. It must be a scrapper guy who's buying war bonds and stamps or whatever. No, why would they do that? <laughs> I don't know. Scrap for victory. Anyway, this apparently scares the horses, which I guess Robin's driving because Batman gets on top of the Batmobile and says he's going to test Einstein's theory that he can travel as fast as the Batman plus his own. And then jumps on a horse is and calms him down. Meanwhile, Robin drives... I don't even know what that threw a train stop. Railroad, right? yeah, it does look like a train know. stop. I don't know. Yeah, it's a railroad crossing, but there's another car like coming at him. Yeah, but we cut from them crossing a the railroad to Batman and Robin just punching a couple guys. Yeah, they just walk around punching people. And the Cavalier is just watching this happen. And he's like, "Uh, all right, guys, I'll take over now." And he starts hitting Robin with his electric sword. <laughs> Yeah, he's cattle proud of him. And so he holds off Batman and Robin until a train comes, and the train cuts them off, and they get... Well, no, I'm sorry. The train's coming, and the Cavalier says, here, you want this? He throws the miniature baseball bat, and then the train cuts them off from catching them. Yeah. And then the narrator is asking us, what? Why would he give the like bat? I really don't like that when the narrator cuts in here. You know why he's giving them the bat. You're the narrator. <laughs> yeah, yeah, stupid narrator. Batman and Robbie can't figure out why he wanted the bat, and then, oh, of course, subway electric lights. Yeah, and it, when you pick something up that twists off, right? Okay, you try to twist the way you're used to twisting it, but you also try the other way, right, without having to think about it? <laughs> no, yes. you have to think of subway electric lights. <laughs> yeah, I guess you have to think of subway electric lights to tw twist the other way. My Actually, is usually I twist the wrong way first anyway. <laughs> me too, me too. I so too. it probably would have come off for me. <laughs> My question is, they say they use the subway electric lights to stop people from stealing them. Is that was that actually how that works? People don't go and steal. Why are they stealing electric uh, subway lights, first of all? And two, would them unable to screw it one way stop them from stealing the electric lights if they really want to steal them? Your first, your first question was answered in the last uh, episode we had when they robbed a bubblegum factory and sold oh, the bubblegum on the black market. That's, that's so, fair. So, yeah, you probably can get uh, black market lights going. The other thing is, I don't understand that either. Because, so they twist the other way. The people can't just twist them the other way and take them out? Apparently, I guess. Uh, maybe in the 40s, you're only allowed to twist one way, and that was it. I, I, that's why I he guess. couldn't get the bat open. Their wrist can't go the other way, apparently. Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, they just confuse him. And they give up right away. Yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. they didn't have the bones in their wrist that developed in humans at that time. <laughs> you got all these confused criminals walking around saying, I don't know how to twist things anymore. <laughs> anyway, inside the baseball bat was a piece of cotton because they shook it before and nothing was you know, jingling in it. So why would there be something inside of it? The cotton was there to stop it. And it has an imprint of the key. I don't think that's how cotton works, though. But oh, Yeah, those, yeah, it's memory foam. It was memory foam. foam. Yeah, it was memory foam. <laughs> Meanwhile... They're, the thugs are gonna are taking the Cavalier 
somewhere to their next destination. Yeah, but they, taking them they stop. They stop along the way because the Cavalier has to help an old lady cross the street and help her into her apartment. <laughs> because that's his code of honor? I don't know. And he saw her and realized he had to help her and get out and help her. You're right. Chivalry. Yeah, it's chivalry. Weird. Whatever. But the thugs are like, this is stupid. <laughs> and they're not wrong. No, they're not wrong. And he gets back in and he's like, ah, we can... Batman... They stop for like three minutes. Is Batman really gonna like catch up now because of that? Uh, yes. <laughs> I mean, in, in the comic, yes, but in reality, I don't think it really would have made a difference. No. And like Batman and Robin go to Barry Barrington, and they're like, what was in, what does the key open? He's like, uh, it opens a safe that has mini- sports miniatures in it that are only available yeah. to him. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, the ca- Cavalier goes to the safe, unlocks it, and... Yet yeah, it's a priceless collection to him personally. He wants these sports figurines that are apparently worthless, and the, the his goons are like, "That's what we're doing this for, right?" Like you came here for that, but like they're not. You're not even going to sell them. You're just going to keep them. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't understand what this story is. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I, That's I'm I got curious of where it's going. Like, if it's a continue somewhere or <laughs> what. Maybe, but I have no idea why he wants a sports memorabilia. What's his attachment to it is? I, uh, it's very strange. I don't There's know. no reason for it. So. Anyway, Batman and Robin show up. There's a big scuffle. Batman uses a fishing rod because I guess they're in a sporting good or this guy collects uh, sporting. I guess, <laughs> yeah. They, I don't know. They all. There's just a reason to have this. Meanwhile, Ro- Batman picks up a fishing rod and he starts fencing the Cavalier with his. Lightning sword. Uh, right. One of the thugs picks up a uh, bow and arrow, but Robin tennis rockets him. Another guy comes at Robin with a golf club, but Robin throws baseballs at him. And then Batman and the Cavalier continue to fence until the Cavalier is disarmed. But then he throws a steel tip dart at Batman and jumps down and then onto a motorcycle, crashes out the window, and gets away. Huh. And then. Shortly after that, the person who owned the miniatures is like, thanks, Batman and Robin. And Batman's like, well, add the Cavalier to your collection soon. Or what, are they going to hand them over to him? Or not to jail? <laughs> no, you just drink them? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> but the Cavalier says, you are you will feel my steel again. And watch for another adventure of the Cavalier in the Batman magazine. So not Detective Comics. Apparently not. <laughs> I don't know. So, did you guys catch, and maybe I wasn't listening to you talk, but did you catch the little box there when the guy goes through the window? The little box, what, he's driving through the window? Yeah, and it says, and before the... Dynamic uh, duo. Does yours say dynamic? It says dyne dash amic duo connect. And mine does not say that. Mine says, and before the... It looks like a Chinese symbol dash amic duo can act. It says D Y N. Yeah, it dash. says D Y N dash. I'm gonna send it to you so you can see what mine says. And mine's a digital copy. Like it doesn't I was so confused. I thought they were trying to like do something else. But mine like it's just the N or something. It maybe says D Y N. Maybe they they were censoring dine for some reason. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. You, it just came through in yours so you could see it, but I... Super weird. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know what that is. <laughs> it doesn't say it. It's and like I, a, a Y. So like when I y. read it earlier, I was like, I don't know what... Are they insinuating something? I was trying to figure out what this is. I'm like, I read it as the dynamic duo, but I was like, what is, is that? Is that a symbol for die or something? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't yeah, know. It doesn't matter. I just was curious right. of what you were said. All right. So, yeah, I mean, that one was okay. <laughs> I like when we get a new character. And yeah, I think that that helps a lot when there's a new character involved. I don't know that guy, but... They, it has to, I they like have to, it. They yeah. have to change up their the way they're telling the story when they introduce a new guy. Right, like, right. It's, they, it, they, it's almost like they have to try. Yeah. I yeah, just I like didn't it. like the way it ended. Like, well, you speak, you talk about that a lot. Like, there's always a rush at the end. Well, and there was a rush at the end, but I'm more concerned that, like, if that's the end of the story, I have a problem. 
if it's going somewhere with another story, then okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because, like, why did he want that stuff? Nothing it, that he got was of any type of value at all. Nothing. I think he Not just likes li- he, he likes sports mem- memorabilia and he wants to keep it. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> it was a very, very interesting way to get it. Yeah, yeah, it really it was. was. A long a way to get it. Also, yeah. how are you going to pay all those guys? And guess what? Barry Barrington, that was his single appearance, so good luck seeing anything more about his sports memorabilia. You're assuming that any of these guys pay any of their goons anything. I don't think they get paid at all. That's true. I don't That's think true. so either. Well, I thought when they got them, we decided they get them from Home Depot, right? They're staying outside yes. of Home Depot. Yeah, they're outside yeah. of Home Depot. You got to pay them something. I think they get like three bucks an hour or something, don't they? In 1940? No, they get paid in food. <laughs> anyway. You're supposed to split the goods with them, but... So we got feature characters Batman, supporting characters Robin, <laughs> antagonist the Cavalier Mortimer Drake, and Jennings. So we're not done yet, because after the Batman story, there's oh, no. a story about Slam Bradley. Okay. But after that, we got a book review and a Superman secret code. Oh. Oh, we put it. I thought you were going to talk about the um the Wheaties, <laughs> the Wheaties uh, advertisement that comes right after the, the Batman comic. We can talk about that, too, if you want. Nah, I'm good. <laughs> Well, you already brought it up. You can't. You can't <laughs> it just, not. It just say. It just says food power will help you get the champion start of the day. But then it says at the bottom, Wheaties is the breakfast fist of champions, and in small print it says with milk and fruit. <laughs> so it's the breakfast of champions if you add fruit and milk to it, or you just oh. eat milk and fruit and then not the Wheaties. It's probably the same thing. <laughs> I, I guess I don't actually think I've ever had Wheaties. <laughs> no, I think I have. Like it's been a long time, but no. Anyway, so the book review is. This week is the Gremlins. Ooh. Not those Gremlins. This Ooh, is a, Gizmo? It's a Royal Air Force story by Flight Lieutenant Roll Roll Dahl. With oh, pictures. Wow. Yeah, Roll Dahl is the guy who wrote um uh Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Yeah, by Flight <laughs> Lieutenant Roll Dahl with pictures by Walt Disney. Wow. Yeah. I want to see this. Uh, I was actually going to make fun of it. And then I <laughs> no, no. I'm like, wow, I want to check that out. <laughs> Roald Dahl, he wrote um the, the one about the little witch girl, too. I forget the name. Uh, Matilda. He wrote that, too. Huh. Hmm, I didn't know that. Yeah, he's the, the, he's the author of um, Charlie and Chocolate Factory. That one. And there's Matilda. quite a few. He had Well, there's quite a few that he wrote. Uh, the, the giant one that was out a couple years back. Uh, the BFG. Big Friendly Giant. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, that was interesting. Anyway, so we're going to Mars for Superman's secret code. Stamps and war bonds. Get your scrap metal. Scrap metal might be a good one. You might be right. You're both wrong. Son of a... War, war bonds and stamps. Which would you rather have? Axis bombs or U.S. bombs? That's a hard question. <laughs> <laughs> you know the, me personally like i can have them i guess i wonder which ones are worth more money i think it all also right. depends on where you live all right I, well I'll listen i'll be honest with you i don't want any bombs coming here <laughs> wait so that's the whole thing <laughs> that's the whole thing which would you rather have Axis Axis bombs? bombs or u.s bombs Wait, I guess so if- they leave me on a cliffhanger in the story and with the secret code? <laughs> no, they don't leave you a cliffhanger. They're asking you a little question and question. It ends with a question mark. Who do I yeah, answer to? I also need more information before I can decide. I know. Are you talking about dropping them on my house? Because I don't <laughs> yes. want either one of them. I don't, I don't want, want anyone, them. anyone to do that. <laughs> yeah. I want I none want of them. that. I want none. I'm not picking. Look, they just want to know which ones do you prefer. Do you? Do they mean which one would you rather have more of? Like which which per side would you rather have more bombs? Because I guess we want you know our country to have more bombs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I spent like five minutes deciphering this code, and I'm telling you the information that I have. You just got to take what you get. But who do we give so the wait, answer to? Are you this- asking the question or just reading it to us, and that's the end? No, I I asked you the question that they asked you, and we're answering here on the podcast. Well, can we have more information, please? I need more information. Nope, that's... (laughs) (laughs) I I gotta gotta have more information. You can't ask us a question without any... We have follow-up questions. I'm not asking you. Apparently, Superman's asking you, because this is his secret code. (laughs) We have follow-up questions. Get Superman (laughs) on the line, quickly. Now, while you were doing this, I did look up some information about the memorabilia stuff. And I don't know if I should cover it right now. Or well, wait until we get to it. Well, wait until 
we'll, we'll wait. We won't talk about it on the podcast. How about that? Deal. Deal. All so, right. So everybody listening is going to be like, well, I want to hear it. What are you talking about? Well, then You'll I guess they're going to have to listen to, in. You have to wait to the next time. From when the next time the Cavalier shows up. Yes. It, we're going to forget. We are. But no, it's, okay. I, I it's, probably, it's probably a part of the story. No, because it Barry is. Barrington doesn't come back. So doesn't matter. It's part of the story. Okay, good. All right. And I don't so, forget anything. <laughs> you don't. I do. We do. I got to text you every I, week and ask what numbers we have. I, <laughs> or do I do forget a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, no. That's why I do most of the work. So why do guys who know how to fence make good security? Because they're always on guard. On guard? Like on guard? Oh, I thought they were like putting up fences. Yeah, that's what I thought too. <laughs> I thought it was. I thought we were going with something like an electric fence because of the lightning sword. <laughs> Don't whiz on the electric fence. Do not. Yeah, I learned that on BBC Butthead. 